Welcome to Lab 506, the ideal gas law and gas constant. I'm Alexa. And I'm Crystal. And we're going to show you the best way to do this lab. First, we'll start with safety materials, gloves, aprons, and ladies, hair up. And of course, like always, closed-toed shoes. Now that you have the safety out of the way, measure out 0.14 grams of magnesium turnings onto weighing paper. We're not going to show you because you should already know how to do this. And then put them into your test tube. And if you, ha you should have about this much. If you have way more, way less, you probably did it wrong. So then put on the rubber stopper, which you will need later on in the experiment. And after this, you're ready to set up the rest. So you grab your graduated cylinder, the bowl, and the syringe. And now we'll show you how to set it up. There are two ways of inverting your graduated cylinder. Um, I'll show you the first way. It is to fill up your graduated cylinder. And then you take your bowl, you put it on top, make sure that it's secure, and then flip it over very carefully. If you get a small air bubble, it's negligible, it's fine. I mean, as long as it's not huge. And then you, I've already prepared some other DIY water to pour, to create a water bath. And that is one way of inverting it. The second way you can do this is by starting off with a water bowl, completely filled with the water. And then next, like you are, like we showed you before, you'll fill up the graduated cylinder with water all the way to the top. Once the graduated cylinder is full, you'll place your hand on the top and secure it. And then flip it very carefully and make sure that the nose of the graduated cylinder is underneath the water in the water bath. And then you will remove your hand very carefully not to get any air bubbles in. However, if you were to get any air bubbles in, the way that you can make sure this is okay is if you gently lift up the nose of the graduated cylinder to capture a small air bubble. And now you can see that it's at the tick marks and you will be able to uh, measure your initial volume. However, make sure you do not get too large of an air bubble because you do not know for your first trial how much gas that the magnesium will exert. So uh, This is what your final setup should look like. You should have your magnesium turnings from previously and another smaller water bath that you'll need for the hydrochloric acid and magnesium turnings. And this is what we showed you earlier. And make sure you record right now before you forget the initial volume. We're going to show you the one with the air bubble because you need a little extra work, but don't worry. It won't take too long. And now, also put in the thermometer to take the temperature of the water bath. Don't forget to do this each and every time you do a trial because the temperature can fluctuate and it could give inaccurate results if you forget. So, now we will fill the syringe with exactly 10 milliliters of the hydrochloric acid. And then you will place this into the second hole in the stopper. And set this in here. Very carefully feed the tube up into the graduated cylinder, if, if the tube falls out, it could give inaccurate readings and volume. We will show you what happens later on. Okay, now that you have that in there, slowly start to inject the hydrochloric acid into the magnesium turnings in the test tube. As you're doing this, slowly stir in order to help the reaction go on. Very slowly do this. As you can see, the gas capturing in the graduated cylinder.
once the reaction is complete and you have no more hydrochloric acid in the syringe, still stir and make sure that no more gas bubbles are still going in. If you have some, continue doing this until they're gone. And now you see that the reaction has reached completion. And make sure the reason you're doing this slowly is because that the reaction is exothermic and if you do it too quickly, you could actually shatter your test tube. And now, this is the perfect time to record the final volume and also the temperature of your water. And now, my partner will show you what happens if the test tube little cord comes out while you're doing the experiment. Whenever you started adding your HCl, it would lose a lot of the air that is in the graduate cylinder. If you were too rough, if you had this too far away, it would result in air falling out into the atmosphere instead of into the graduated cylinder. Therefore, you would lose your hydrogen gas and you would have to restart the trial. As you can see, when you do the experiment incorrectly, there's clearly a big difference in the amount of H2 gas capture. So, now to measure the height difference between the water bath and the graduated cylinder, the easiest way to do this is by taking a centimeter ruler and measuring very closely the difference in the two water levels by measure by lining up the end of the ruler at the, sur at the surface of the water. And then, as you can see, for ours, it is about 8.43. And then once you do that, don't forget that there's a conversion factor in your lab notebook. And it tells you exactly how to convert from centimeters to pressure, which will be needed when you are calculating the total pressure of the H2 gas. When you have completed the experiment, be sure to dispose of all the magnesium chloride and any unused hydrochloric acid in the halogenated waste container because both of these compounds contain the halogen chlorine yet do not contain anything considered a heavy metal. Now that we have shown you how to properly do this experiment, there are a couple things we don't want you to forget. Number one, when doing your calculations, don't forget to subtract off the 10 milliliters of volume displaced by the hydrochloric acid. Number two, don't forget to record the barometric pressure for that day given by your TA. Number three, don't forget to record the vapor pressure associated with the temperature of your water bath from the lab room. If you use an outside source, it could increase your error. Thank you so much for watching our video, and I hope it helped. Good luck, and have fun with this experiment.